Tell me about what you, the new equipment you have. Yeah, so they're called poppers, purified uh, air powered respirators. Uh, and the neat thing about these are they're self-contained breathing apparatuses for our paramedics. Um, they're, they're self-contained, allows them to breathe. You can see their full face, um, not fogging up their glasses, which is one of the biggest problems with, with our uh, PPE now. Um, and basically it's 99.9% .9 effective. It's filtering, it's got a HEPA filter, has a fan, and it just is, provides the, you know, the peace of mind and the protection for our paramedics. Tell me where you got them, sort of when they went to service. Is there a lot of training to go with them? Yeah, so uh, we got them just uh, late December. Uh, and what we wanted to do is put together a, a good training package so people you know, knew how to use them, they were safe using them, um, and efficient in using them. So we, we put together a training package, put that out by webinar, um, and as people can completed that training, then we were able to push them out to each paramedic as, as the time comes through. So when they, they don't wear them, I take it, they don't wear them when they're driving, when they get on scene, then they put them on like they would a mask? Yeah, so not, probably not when they're driving. We, we ask people, and you'll see our paramedics always around with masks if they're working with another person to keep everybody safe. Um, so we, we didn't want to pigeonhole when people could wear these um, respirators. So they, we have a multitude of different uh, respirators uh, right now. So you're going to see these people on you know, acute patients, the high level patients where we're trying to do uh, different treatments. Um, you'll see the powered uh, poppers is what they're referred to as. Um, you'll see them on those. If, if the call is at a construction site or a car accident where extrication is required, we're asking them because they need to wear their helmet, um, then they'll wear their helmet and then you'll see them in either a disposable mask or you'll see them in what's called a half mask respirator. Um, the drawback with the half mask respirator, of course, you can't see their face, you can't read their lips. If it's difficult to hear, you may not be able to hear what the paramedic's saying. The, another great attribute of the poppers, you can see the expression on the paramedic's face, you can see their lips if someone's hard of hearing, and I think you can just see the people better. Safe to say you'll be wearing them as much as possible then. I guess when, it, when it's, <laughs> when it's uh, applicable, you'll be wearing them as much as you can. Absolutely, and, and right now our feedback from our paramedics is they're comfortable, um, they feel good wearing them, they protect them, um, you know, no fog glasses, all those other attributes, safe for them, safe for the patients. So as much as we can wear them, you're probably going to see those paramedics out there wearing them. And don't be alarmed, it might look a little weird, but uh, it's keeping you safe, them safe, and I think it's a, it's a great uh, attribute for them now. How many did you get? And you know the cost? Yeah, yeah, so we, we got 150 uh, units, and the cost was just over $200,000. Um, and what was, uh, was made possible by um, uh, some safe restart funding uh, that was provided to us. And we think that this is the, you know, the biggest bang for a buck. We know that you're protected with these. We don't have to continually doing fit tests. We're not um, you know, at the supply and demand chain. We know that you're gonna get this. This is what you're gonna wear. It's just safety, and I think it makes our paramedics feel safe. They feel comfortable, and they can do their job so much better. now if you can okay. just describe so I've taken it out I've turned the power on so it's running I'm just gonna clip into it and it just goes around your waist over top of your belt it just sits right above your belt bring it around put it on your head and fit it and then you just pull this tab down and it goes right over your or under your chin and it keeps your mask from fogging up and I'm breathing fresh, clean air. And it's sealed. It is sealed, yes. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and if I had to wear glasses, I could wear my glasses and I wouldn't have any issues with fogging. And as Sue was saying, if you can just describe, it's a lot better for you to interact with a patient because you aren't wearing, if you can just talk a little bit about that. That's right. So it's nice where you can interact with a patient and see eye to eye, face to face especially if there's any disabilities at all um, hearing at least somebody can see me talking to them and they can read my lips and just getting that um, personality they can see your face they can see your eyes you can empathize you can sympathize with them it's nice that way because it's not always the nicest when we have to come into their house anyway so if they can see our face it's a little a little easier for them 
Tell me about this then, Trevor. Like this has, it's, tell me what this is used for. So this would be like at a construction site or a car accident when you can't wear the full gown that Giselle had on. And uh, this is a, an N, a 3M mask with filters and safety goggles and then our helmet. And you can't wear these at construction sites or car accidents or you can't wear the other because of the helmet you need in case something falls because yes. of the sharp objects around construction, accidents, things like that? This is rated for, you know, high impact and stuff like that. That, that mask and the helmet is not. It's just for strictly in the house, PPE. But you can certainly see the drawbacks with what you're wearing now if you can just describe a little bit. Um, yeah. I don't know if the person, person can't see my face, you can see my eyes, and it's harder to hear because of the mask itself and the filters. So you kind of have to yell when you go into the house and interact with people. So. So is this what you were wearing before you got those? Yes. Okay, yes. I see. Well, we, we, we started off with the N95 mask, and this is an improvement. This is a better um, uh, fit. More safer, I take it, all the way around? Obviously, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to ask you one last question if I can. Tell me about a little bit about, um, you were saying the environment, how, how much a N95, talk a little bit about that because that's really interesting. Yeah, so both with the Pappers that you saw Giselle wearing as well as the uh, half mask respirator Trevor's wearing, these are multi-use. So after we finish a call, we clean them um, and make, disinfect them, but we can use them again. Um, using the disposable mask where it's N95, a surgical mask, it's a one time. We use it once and then we have to dispose it through stericycle, etc. So the cost, you know, how they're, you know, they're disposing of those. We feel this is a green safe initiative and we're really excited about rolling these uh, multi-use uh, PP protections out there. With the cost of the N95s, even though this is, again, if I get my numbers right, even though these were 200,000, it yeah. will, because of the COVID's not going anywhere in the near future this will be a money saver. Oh, absolutely. In the long run, this is the way to go. Like I say, it's safer. People feel more safe. It's safer for our patients, um, as well as then these can be used for years. They can, you know, we had SARS, we had Ebola, uh, you know, other infectious influenza that comes every year. These can be used. They're battery operated. They, they can stay on the shelf forever. So this is the better bang. I mean, right now, you know, sometimes we're paying upwards of seven, eight, nine dollars for a, a disposable mask. And the problem with those uh, disposable masks are, as stock de deplenishes, what we're having to do is fit test everybody again. So that takes time getting everyone, you know, 100 medics in, fit testing them again. This way they know, that's my poppers, it works, I'm protected. That's my half mask regulator, I've been fit tested, I know that works, I'm protected. And that, we, we want to protect our paramedics. We want them to feel safe going out there to help the, param the, the, the community. You're one of the first people that you know of in this area, maybe in the province or? Um, I, I'm not sure. I think we probably are, are definitely in the front line. It's kind of an innovation excellence. I know of other services that are using as specialty teams. So a lot of the bigger uh, communities potentially, they're using it when they're, you know, they know they're carrying this COVID patient positive from one community to, uh, to an ICU. But we thought, you know, it's better to protect 100% of our people. We had access to that special funding and we thought the best thing to do is protect our paramedics. Giselle, um, I just want to get the difference between uh, vocal stuff. Right. Um, again, you can hear, you can talk fine. Just say a little bit if you can. Yeah, um, I can breathe my fresh air. I'm not having any difficulties with fogging up at all. And I have a nice breeze on my face. And you can see I'm not fogging. Trevor? Uh, I potentially could fog my glasses um, inside a house where it's warm. Um, I have to talk a little bit louder for people to hear me. Uh, it's not as clear and you can't see my face. 